Recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Welcome to Cook's Kitchen. I'm Kevin Cook. I traded currencies for 10 years, so I know what the number one currency is. It's not the dollar. It's not the euro. It's confidence. And today we're going to take a deep dive look at some confidence measures you want to pay attention to right now. Because we could debate all day about falling GDP and falling earnings and rising debt, predicting the next recession. But economists have been calling for that for a while. These confidence measures might give us an early read. Every Tuesday of the third, the last Tuesday of every month, I call uh, Confidence Tuesday. And that's because two surveys come out, consumer confidence, and we're, next we're going to look at the State Street Investor Confidence Survey. First of all, consumer confidence, you know, still hanging out in the 90s, which is good. Um, you, this is a chart going back to uh, April of 2013, so early 2013. Got, you know, three good years of data on this chart. The right scale is the consumer confidence index, you can see, hanging out in the 90s. The left uh, hand scale is uh, retail sales, the, the gray bars going up and down. And that's the year over year change in retail sales. Uh, obviously, it's nice to plot these two against each other because they are so correlated. Consumer confidence is high, consumers are spending, that's good for retail sales, that's good for the economy. Obviously, the feedback loop can go the other way. All right, back to the chart. So, uh, this is from, I took this from uh, Bloomberg.com. Uh, they use EconoDay and Haver Analytics uh, for this data. So, and they note that obviously retail sales and consumer co optimism don't necessarily track each other every month. But, you know, what, what's our situation here? We've got this, you know, coming into 2015, this drop off in retail sales. Very concerning. Confidence pretty much hung in there, though. Uh, retail sales bounce back after another uh, another winter, uh, you know, but then then dip again. So uh, areas of concern here, just things you want to pay attention to. Uh, if consumer confidence goes below 90, a lot of people are going to pay attention to that. All right, next we're going to look at the State Street Investor Confidence Survey. Uh, this one flies under the radar. It also comes out the last Tuesday of the month along with consumer confidence. That's why I call it Confidence Tuesday. Now, this is uh, not just an, a survey of institutional uh, bias in the stock market. They're actually looking at positions in the stock market. So it's not an attitude survey. It's where are large investors positioning the stock market, and then they create this index. Uh, let's take a look at the chart here so you can see you know, where we've come from. So in you know, four years ago, uh, in the spring of 2012, this index was fighting to get above 90. Um, you know, then the bull market takes off again in 2013. We get a surge. And this thing has lived above 100, which is 100 is the marker here for, uh, for confidence and optimism among large investors. Um, you know, it can be pretty choppy. Let me show you how it's broken down so you can understand it a little bit. Again, it's, uh, it's not an attitude survey. They, State Street makes that clear. Uh, it measures confidence by directly assessing the changes in investor holdings of equities. Um, obviously, the more that invest large investors are willing to allocate, the greater their confidence. So that's how they produce this confidence index. Um, it's based on 45 countries and is broken into three components, North America, Europe, and, and Asia Pacific. I'll back up to it. So this is the composite index. And so... In any given month, you might have a reading like 110 for North America uh, and maybe only 90 for Europe. Europe did slip below 100. Um, it has bounced back. So the index is in positive territory right now, and it's mostly because uh, the U.S. equity markets are holding it up. Okay, so if you want to learn more about that, go to the State Street website or uh, Bloomberg.com on their economic calendar, and you can find it on the last Tuesday of every month. All right, let's move on to the National Federation of, uh, I forgot what NFIB stands for, National Federation of Independent Business. Okay, we'll, we'll go, we'll look at the chart first. 
Um, this is one I've shown repeatedly over the over the years here. I like it because this is small businesses are surveyed on 10 components about their business. You know, things like hiring, uh, capital outlays, their expectations for sales, their expectations for the economy. What I have, what I really liked in 2015 when I was very bullish still in early 2015 was that this small business optimism index was living above the 95 level. You know, you got, uh, we come out of another harsh winter, bounces right back, gets above 98. Um, but then coming into the summer of 2015, it was the first time it cracked below 95. And now look where we are. You know, we're in the low 90s. So um, let's get a read on this. Uh, so I'm going to show you a, a description again, a lot of text on the page here about what the NFIB is. Uh, a couple of things. One, just, you know, I think it's important to understand the mechanics of these investor and consumer surveys. Uh, but you can also, you know, you can stop the video player and and read it anytime you want if you want to go into the de details deeper. I just want to highlight a few things here. So the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index um, is conducted every month, and it includes 10 seasonally adjusted components based on uh, these areas, things like employment, ca uh, plans to make capital outlays, plans to increase inventories. Uh, do they expect the economy to improve? Do they expect retail sales to be higher? Uh, what's current inventory? What are current job openings? What do they expect for credit conditions? Uh, what, uh, is it a good, do they think it's a good time to expand? What are the earnings trends? All these questions are incredibly important if you get uh, enough small businesses answering them and can collect this data because Who's doing the hiring right now? It's small businesses. Uh, just like the consumer is 70% of the economy, small businesses are over 55% of the labor force. So this is crucial. What is their outlook on the economy and their own business? Very important. So it's worth noting that this confidence index is slipping here. OK. Now, uh, oh, so yeah. Let's get the details on how much the NFIB is slipping. Um, the, I've highlighted in yellow here. So March's number slipping to 92.6 surpasses February's two-year low. February was already at a two-year low. We're below that. And we're well below the 42-year average of 98. That's how important 98 is on this survey. So uh, and the last thing I want to emphasize here down at the bottom, um, Though small business owners were more optimistic than in February in their expectations that the economy will improve, this component of the index is still in deep pessimistic territory at a negative 17 percent. Okay, so the, there are many readings within the NFIB survey that are deeply pessimistic. Overall, it's trending pessimistic. This is an area of concern. All right, and uh, you know. So we will want to ma match this up against consumer confidence as well. A note about, so I showed you the State Street Investor uh, Survey. You know, that's a different class altogether. That's a, that's a reading on confidence from a different part of the economy. You know, it's institutional investors, guys with billions and, and trillions in the aggregate whose job it is to buy equities. They're confident. Why are they so confident in a, you know, in a global economy that could be teetering on recession and a U.S. economy that's trying to hang on to 2% plow horse growth um, in an earnings recession, hey, maybe their confidence comes from central bank liquidity. Uh, so you have to consider that question. All right. Let's move on to, this is from Doug Short uh, at Advisor Perspectives. Uh, Doug is a quant who, you know, crunches a lot of data every week and will take any economic report and turn it into something interesting. So what stood out to me is he took two things that I look at a lot and he plotted them together. Consumer confidence, which just came out uh, on Tuesday this week, and the NFIB, which came out uh, the week prior. So consumer confidence is in blue and NFIB is in red. Um, I think he's just trying to see how do they track each other. Well, you know, they track each other pretty closely. Um, in, the, in the late 90s, during the huge bull market surge, consumer confidence was going through the roof, and the NFIB was, was hanging tough in, uh, you know, around the 110 level. 
Um, then look how we come out of the 2001-2002 recession. Um, small business optimism surges back, uh, which was interesting, and consumer confidence climbs slowly. Then they both, you know, fall in the toilet here in the, in the recession, 08-09, uh, and then look how closely they've tracked each other coming back here. All the way to this nice little divergence. Small business optimism heading south, consumer confidence going sideways below 100. So, um, you know, something that, that you want to pay attention to. So we know investors are confident about central bank liquidity. I don't think that small businesses think the same way or the consumers. They're not, uh, they're not pinning their hopes on low interest rates from the Fed. So these are the things we need to look at. These are the confidence measures you want to pay attention to every month. All right. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. I'm Kevin Cook.